Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see all of us out of bed and in the church on bright, sunny Michigan morning. It is good to be back home after my adventures last weekend. Um, we just got a couple announcements, and I was just informed that one of them is not correct. However, um, this Sunday and next Sunday, St. Paul's is hosting dinner for the Rippling Hope Volunteers. Um, we have everything set for this week, but next week our fearless leader, Sarah, will be out of town. So we're going to be looking for a little extra help to get stuff over there so that all of the volunteers can be fed a lovely Detroit dinner. Consistory will not be next week after service. It will be the following week. So consistory is the 10th of July. And a church picnic is tentatively scheduled for July 17th. So talk to Sarah or Nancy to let them know if that's a good date for you. And we'll all go outside and eat way too much food. And Harry can teach us all to play horseshoes. Are there any other announcements? Oh, there's no Bible study, so you can ignore that in the tidings until September-ish. All right, if there are no other announcements, please join in our first hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Inviting us to worship. The Spirit is here. In each of our lives. The Spirit is here. In our gathered community. The Spirit is here. Guiding us together in love, peace, and patience. Please join me in the invocation. Speak to us, Spirit of wisdom and truth, as we worship this day. Bind us together into a community of love and peace. Live and move in our lives, that we may grow in your spirit, deepen our faithfulness, and display the love, peace, patience, kindness, and generosity you have planted in our souls. First reading for today, 2 Kings 2, 1-2, 6-14. 
Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Babel. Elijah said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down the road to Bethel. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men in the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them. And as they both were standing by the Jordan, then Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, struck the water, and the water was parted to one side and to the other. And the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you, Elisha said. Please, let me inherit a double share of your spirit, he responded. You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. And as they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses, a fire, a chariot of fire and horses, a fire separated two of them, and Elijah ascended into a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen and struck the water. He said, Where is the Lord? the God of Elijah. Where is he? He struck the water again, and the water was parted to one side and to the other, and Elisha crossed over. The second reading is Galatians 5, 1 and 13 through 25. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brother and sister, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become enslaved to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of flesh. For what the flesh desire is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For those, for these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, and factions. Envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like that. I am warning you as I warned you before. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Our Gospel reading is from Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 through 62. When the day, days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for his arrival. But they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. 
But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The word of God for the people of God. What do we do with our scriptures for the day? The two of them, someone is preparing to leave companions and followers behind and ascend into heaven. In the other, Paul is writing to the church in Galatia and is founding on what constitutes proper behavior and is desirable and what is improper behavior and is undesirable. In both of our New Testament scriptures, it would seem that there are conditions being set for who is acceptable and who is not in the realm of God. For anyone who has attended college, you probably had to take at least one sociology class. I took a bunch because it was my major. For anyone who took even a beginning sociology class, you, heard, you certainly heard of in-groups and out-groups. People create groups where they are part of a group and others are not. Much of this is done because as long as there is an out-crowd, people can feel better about themselves because they're part of the in-crowd. This is not any kind of judgment. It is simply an observation on the human condition. Many of us also suffered through this human practice in elementary and high school. I was never part of the cool crowd when I went to school. My parents didn't have the resources to pay for the popular fashions, and I often wore hand-me-downs. In high school, I didn't participate in sports. I took college prep classes, but wasn't in the upper echelon of academic achievement. I went home for lunch and didn't have a car. Definitely not one of the cool kids. I was an out, not an in. But I wasn't alone in that, and Jesus and his followers fit that category as well. As Jesus is heading for Jerusalem, he travels through the area of Samaria. The occupants are less than welcoming. This irritates James and John, and they look for permission to call down fire from heaven and destroy the town. Jesus tells them to chill and just move along. He recognizes that they are being rejected because they are not part of the in-crowd in Samaria, and that it really isn't about them personally, it's about their identity as Jews. Sometimes people in one group see violence as a reaction to encountering members of an out-group. Christians and Muslims clash in horrifying encounters that end with people on both sides dead, injured, or traumatized. Pro-choice and anti-abortion groups throw rocks and bottles at each other, sometimes escalating into greater violence. Anti-LGBT groups protest at pride events, declaring that they will all burn in hell for the behavior and identity. On June 12th, the anniversary of the Pulse nightclub shooting was observed. For those who don't recall it, a lone gunman entered a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida, and over a period of several hours, killed 49 people and injured 53 while keeping the police at bay as he held, held the patrons hostage. Why? He was killed by police, so he cannot be questioned. But he had expressed support for radical Islamic groups and may have believed that he was required to kill LGBTQ people as an act of religious obedience. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that he somehow believed that doing what he did made his position better. He became more in as he eliminated the out. Paul writes to the church in Galatia. Last week's scripture tells us that our intrinsic differences don't matter. We are all one in Christ. There are no ins and no outs. In this week's portion of the same letter, Paul goes on to enumerate the works of the flesh as opposed to the works of the Holy Spirit. I am sure that many of us recognize the works of the flesh as traits about ourselves and others that we find unattractive, irritating, repulsive, or just unacceptable. While the works of the Spirit we may recognize in ourselves and others as appealing, soothing, attractive, or acceptable. Those who are led by the Spirit are part and parcel of the followers of Christ and will be known by their traits. There are many ways that we can become better followers of the Spirit. Self-awareness of how we are acting and behaving is one. I don't know that many <clears throat> I don't know that many of us are engaging in sexual immorality, debauchery, or sorcery, 
but we may find ourselves angry or having arguments with others. Knowing what triggers us and seeking the guidance of the Spirit to avoid these instant reactions brings us closer to experiencing joy, peace, and self-control. It also allows us to more regularly and completely love our neighbor as ourselves. Jesus and his followers are not part of the temple in crowd. They were a group of rabble-rousers who hung out with an itinerant rabbi who it seems did not have formal training beyond was learned in synagogue school. <coughs> when the Samaritans made it clear that they were not going to be welcomed into their crowd, James and John got rather testy about it. Perhaps they were insulted that they were not even afforded common courtesy. The option to sleep in the town center which would have which would afford some level of protection from robbers or wild animals. Maybe they were offended because the Samaritans didn't recognize Jesus' authority. Perhaps they just didn't like Samaritans because they weren't Jews, and James and John saw this slight as an opportunity to get rid of a whole town of outs. But as they continue their journey to, toward Jerusalem, they encounter a number of people who seem prepared to join in with Jesus entourage, except they need to do something first. One needs to bury his father, one needs to say goodbye, and a third is warned that following will not be comfortable. The passage doesn't indicate if any of them join Jesus' party, but at the end Jesus reflects that those who aren't ready to go all in aren't ready to be followed. Being a follower of Jesus can't be a kind of sort of proposition. Jesus didn't say to love God when it seems like a good idea. He said to love God with every part of you, of you, every fiber of your being, and to love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. Not when they look like you, speak like you, worship like you, or believe the same things you do, but all the time and under all circumstances. If you can't do that, then you can't be part of the group of outsiders that make up Jesus' disciples. I remember seeing a poster one time that listed all of the neighbors we may not want to love that went something like this. Love your neighbor, your black neighbor, your white neighbor, your native-born neighbor, your immigrant neighbor, your married neighbor, your divorced neighbor, your single neighbor, your gay neighbor, your straight neighbor, your Democrat neighbor, your Republican neighbor, your rich neighbor, your poor neighbor, your Muslim, Jewish, and Hindu neighbor, your Christian neighbor, your atheist neighbor, your agnostic neighbor, your educated neighbor, your illiterate neighbor, love them all. We don't get to decide who gets to be in the in love, love your neighbor group. God already decided that for us. And if we are going to follow Jesus, then we need to be all in, not looking back at what we left, because none of it is worth more than what's to come. Move forward, led by the Spirit and following in the footsteps of Jesus, where everyone is in and no one is out. Amen. join in our prayer of dedication. Thank you, God, for your many blessings to us. Accept now our tithes and offerings, and use us and our gifts for your kingdom. Amen. You may be seated. Any more prayers or joys, concerns? I am just grateful for people who are willing to help me out when I didn't even ask. 
Last week I was stranded in Memphis, Tennessee, where I was told by the car dealership that it would take a month to get the part for my car so that I could bring it back home. It's still in Memphis, Tennessee. But my sister and brother-in-law and their two girls made room in their car so that I could get back here. Um, a friend loaned me her car until I could get a rental. And last night I was talking to a friend and she said, well, I was talking to my husband and he said that he'll drive up and get you. They live in Indianapolis. He'll drive up and get you and then drive you down here and I can drive down to Memphis with you and pick up your car so you don't have to get a flight or take a train. So I am exceedingly grateful for people who are willing to go out of their way even when I ain't got enough sense to ask for help. Yes, yeah. One thing us pastors tend to do is help everybody else, but never, but don't ask for help either. We really do. Um, anyways, I personally, I'm here again. Yay. I want to thank everyone for your prayers and cards and the sweet things that have been done this week. Um, it was a panic attack, half stupidity, half we won't discuss, but um, I overdid it on Monday trying to help a friend, and that caused, I did pull some muscles in my chest, and knowing that just a few weeks ago I had a heart procedure, I kind of went, oh my God, you know. I hurt my poor heart. But I am very thankful that I'm here and for all your prayers. Um, <laughs> Kathy is talking about the fact, and we talked about this last Sunday a little bit, but it, Alvina and Jim and Kathy and Curtis, both couples celebrated their wedding anniversaries on June 21st. They were actually at our wedding. So on their wedding anniversary, they were at your wedding. Isn't that cool? Yes. Happy, Happy anniversary. anniversary. Happy anniversary. Good work, Brittany. I'm not kidding. 42 years ago. Have a nice day. <laughs> and obviously, Charlie and Sarah are making a trip next Monday, and Charlie's asking for travel and prayers, for safe travels. And this says, for those who are unable to attend church services, and those who provide the services online. So I'm preaching next week to what? Three people or four? Oh, you'll be here? Okay. I need a worship leader. No, but everybody who is traveling over the holiday weekend, safe travels for everyone. Anything else? Phyllis? Ooh. And Grace, I owe you an apology because I did not put your birthday in the tidings because no one told me it was coming. When is your birthday, so, Grace? 26th of July. We all right, so we have month. a month. All right. Okay. It will definitely be in there next year, I promise you. So now we uh, will remember that. Yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> no, it's in, on my list. But in July, so in we July. can embarrass her. Seeing her happy birthday. I'm big on that. I like to embarrass them. Anyways, getting back. <laughs> Let's get back to service. It doesn't have to be so boring, but thank God he does love the last word. So please join me in a heart of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today full of thankfulness 
full of love and full of frustration. We are thankful that there are people that stepped in to make things easy when we can't, when we don't know what to turn. And we think we have to do it ourselves. So depend on, on you and don't worry about asking for help from anyone else because you'll take care of it. But thank you that there are those you sent to us and help even us to get safe to where we need to be. Lord, I pray that as our dear, dear friends are traveling this week, that you will take them safely there, bring them safely back to us. And may their trips be ones of joy and fun and family. Lord, we have an opportunity and I pray that you will send people to our channels to watch our program, our ministry, Lord. We know that there's so many out there that are hurting and they can't come to church, either for physical or emotional or whatever reason, Lord. Let us be able to take the message to them. And Lord, we are thankful for those that are working together make this, these possible, these recordings that are going out. And we pray that we can continue and grow that as well. Our Lord, I want to thank the people of this church as a whole. John, for the music he brings us each week. <coughs> the senior and, and associate pastors for the, the wonderful messages and loving and concern that they bring. Give them strength and energy and power to bring this word through to the city, to the state. Lord, please help this situation with the Supreme Court not get out of hand. Take it to the polls, whatever needs to be done. But Lord, this is something we have to ask your prayers. We need your help and guidance in how to honor your name as we stand up for the rights of women. <coughs> Lord, this week we celebrate what Fourth of July weekend starts, and it's supposed to be a weekend of freedom. And right now, Lord, it feels like our freedom is slipping, and we pray that you will help bring this country back to a strong country who believes in the rights of all people. And help us to do it peacefully and in a way that is pleasing to you. Lord, some of us have prayers that are so deep we cannot bring it out. So will you please listen to our silent prayer? Now, Lord, we come to you with the prayer that your son taught his disciples and that has passed down to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us join in hymn number 98, where the Spirit of the Lord is. Please rise.
may be seated. When Jesus reached the end of that journey toward Jerusalem, he sat down for a meal with his disciples. And during the meal, he took a piece of bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he handed it among them and he said, take and eat, for this is my body, which will be broken for you. And at the conclusion of the meal, he took a cup and he passed it among them and he said, take and drink all of you, for this is my blood, which will be shed for the forgiveness of your sins and the sins of all. And as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, do it and remember me. In the name of Christ, I offer you the cup and the bread. Take and be nourished. Join me in our closing hymn, I'll Fly Away.
go through your week, listen for the Spirit calling and follow. Leave the past behind and move forward with Christ. May you all have a blessed week. Please join and let there be peace on earth. Thank you.